Hi guys and welcome back to Scribe Gaming. I'm your man Scribe and I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. So I'm going to kick off with episode 2 of my How to Make It as a free to play guide series and today's topic is going to be the arenas and the importance they hold especially for the free to play community. Let's get into it. Okay then guys, so I guess we kind of want to establish why do we want to climb in both Fleet and Squad Arena. The answer is very straightforward. Galaxy of Heroes at its heart is a resource management game and the best source of income in this game is crystals. Crystals will give you access to buy more resources, be that time in farming or be that gear in gearing up your characters. Okay, and Fleet and Squad Arena both give you a large amount of crystals if you can hit the higher tier rewards. You can earn up to 900 crystals every day, and that is more than enough to feed all your farming for every single daily activity that you perform. So that's sort of one element of why we want to climb in Arena, or why we want to um, gear our rosters around climbing in Arena. The second reason is because Typically speaking, the squads that do very well in Arena do very well in every area of the game. Be it TB, TW, GAC, Galactic Challenges, various events, all of these things typically stem from having strong Arena teams. If you've got strong Arena teams, you do well in other areas. And that's an important concept to get around. As a free-to-play, you want to make sure that you... Um, they sort of gear your roster around teams that offer a lot of value for the investment. If they do well in multiple aspects of the game, then it is a good investment, okay? And that's the concept that's really going to drive forward how we gear and mod our roster. So the next section is how would we go about climbing an arena? Now, obviously, this is highly dependent on the maturity of your shard and how many whales are there and all this sort of business, and it would take me hours if I was to go through every different life cycle of every different shard out there. You don't have the time. I certainly don't have the time. Okay? So what you should do is just take a look in your squad arena. Go to the top of the arena shard. Establish what sort of teams are combating it up there. Is it GLs? Is it uh, sort of mid-game meta teams like Darth Revan, Jedi Knight Revan, Padme, Gas, this sort of thing? Okay, that should give you an idea of where you need to go. Okay, so we've established you understand what sort of area you need to progress to. Are you looking to push towards GLs or are you looking to push towards maybe some of those mid-game meta teams like I said? Okay guys, so you find yourself in a position whereby you are starting to climb in Arena and make some progress. You break into top 200, you break into top 100, and at a certain point you find yourself hitting a wall that you just can't seem to break. And this is very likely to happen, guys. Uh, it'll happen in any shard. So, when you hit this point, you really have to establish what the actual problem is. So is it first and foremost, is it a problem that your arena team just doesn't have enough investment to climb further? Maybe you are stuck at gear 11 and everybody else is in relics. Is that the issue? If that's the issue, invest a little bit more in your gearing. Is it a case of, you know, you're approaching particular matchups with an incorrect strategy? Perhaps you, want, you don't know the matchup well enough and that is hampering your ability to progress. Well, if that's the case, go online. There's so much content there about counter videos and how to perform certain matchups. There's a wealth of information, guys. Just go out there, join various Discord channels, ask people for advice, um, and you'll find yourself certainly in a better position to climb. Now, after that, maybe you've established that, no, it's not a case that I don't have enough gear and I'm not playing the matchup right. It's just a case of I'm getting hard countered here by a team that I just can't beat. Well, if that's the case, then you have to start looking at the high-value counter teams that you can gear. When I'm talking about high-value, I talk about how, as we established before, whenever you place an investment into a team, you want to make sure that you're getting the most bang for your buck. So invest in counter teams that are viable across several different areas. Gear up your, your, your Darth Vader team that can take out GLs as well as Jedi and a myriad of other counters. It can help you take out Geos, it can help you take out Mon Mothma teams. It, you know, something that can really round out your roster and you get the most value out of it. 
okay? Things like gas squads, gas squads that can take out pretty much anything. General Skywalker as an individual unit, it, it forms a key part of many GL counter teams. Invest in these high value counters as a priority whilst trying to maintain your current arena ranking, okay? You don't have to be first to start, you know, when you do this, you won't jump immediately to first is the point I'm trying to make is you will start climbing higher and the additional crystal rewards that you get, invest them wisely and, and cover your bases so that you can climb higher in arena. Now, the last and final point that I really want to push home, and this is probably the most valuable point that will serve you for a long time, is modding, guys. Modding is the single most important long-term investment you will ever make in this game, bar none, okay? Meta teams come and go. Mods will always forever be relevant. Now, we're going to break this down incredibly simply for you, okay? You only want to farm two types of mods, speed mods and offense mods, okay? This is a massive generalization. There is a lot more depth to modding than this. But if you want a quick and dirty way of building out your mod roster, farm either offense or crit damage, get secondaries that have got speed and offense percentage. Focus on those mods, slice those mods, keep on slicing them day after day until you get those good mods over 20 speed, that sort of thing, high, high percentage secondary offense mods, not on the same mods necessarily. Um, I'm talking like 5% plus on your speed secondaries when you get them to 6 E. Um, if you focus on these mods, you will be able to apply them to your meta teams as they come and go. And that will immediately give you an advantage over your opponents that do not focus on mods. Not everybody does. Make it a priority. Learn how to mod your teams and invest in them appropriately. I guess I'm just going to round out this video now with a quick example of how I would personally start over a brand new account today. So this is more aimed towards the very new players that are just finding their feet in the game and they're wondering which way they should progress to get the most out of their arena climbing. And I would have to say, go separatists, guys. Go separatists. This has been said before, but ever since the advent of Padme coming into the game and the reworked separatists, quite a, probably about a year ago now, I would say, they have become, in my opinion, the most efficient start to a game, okay? Farm out your Genosians, farm Poggle as a leader. Yes, he's not the best leader, but when we, if we remember back to our key principles of long-term investments, he now will provide you a decent leadership for Genosians. He will also then feed into um, a future support character for a full Geo team when you're able to farm Geo Brood Alpha. And he's a quick and cheap and easy, both farming and gearing. So go for him. Get Asage Ventress. Asage Ventress might sound like a weird choice when you're like, well, why are we going Genosians? Why go Asage? The, the point is twofold, okay? One, Asage is an easy to achieve character. You get it from the squad arena store. Easy shipments there. Two, she will also be used later down the line when you're, farm when you're farming and gearing up your team to get General Skywalker. That is a short-term investment now that will help you build your arena team. She's a decent character and can eventually feed into a Knight Sister team if you ever decide to gear them. Um, and then in the long term, she will help you unlock General Skywalker, which is one of the most high-value characters to get in the game. Great. So the final three spots, I would advise you farm the rest of the Geonosians, Spy, Soldier, and Sun Fac. Now, Spy and Soldier do unfortunately share some similar farming grounds, be it in Cantina, but Cantina farms are very quick in general, and uh, Soldier in particular is an eight energy farm. He's very quick. Um, now, not only will these three feed into, <coughs> excuse me, not only will these three feed into your current arena farm, and they will also become part of a strong Geonosian team down the line, which will be great for territory wars, great for territory battles, help you get into a better guild, but they will also eventually feed into a, a GBA team down the line, and they will currently feed into you getting higher in fleet arena. So this is helping you climb in both arenas simultaneously, so long as you are also farming the ships for these required characters, Sunfac, Geo Soldier, Geo Spy. So make sure you focus around them. This team in particular will easily beat the Padme event once you get the gear levels to an appropriate level. 
And you'll want to gear these characters to an appropriate level because you need them all at good gear levels just to qualify for GB, just to qualify for the gas event down the line, and to boost the, the climbing power of your fleet arena. So go ahead, put a heavy investment in these Geonosians. Unlock Padme. Then when you get Padme, you can have a Padme team of Padme, uh, General Kenobi, Ahsoka Tano, Jedi Knight Anakin, and then as a final slot, I would actually advise for you in, as an early position player to farm out and get Grandmaster Yoda. Now I know you'll turn to me and you'll say, hey guys, you didn't say anything about an additional two Jedi that I need to farm. Who am I supposed to get? Well, this is important, guys. Now, there are so many powerful Jedi and meta Jedi that you can farm that will feed into this, and the Jedi Grandmaster Yoda event is actually incredibly easy. So I would advise you picking any of the Jedi that are going to feed into long-term goals that will feed into future meta teams. You can go down the path of Jedi Knight Revan requirements, things like Bastla Shan, Jolie Bindo. You can go into gas requirements, things like Shaq T. You can also think about further fleet investments down the line, and you can think about maybe you'll go for Plo Koon, who is a fantastic Galactic Republic ship. If you go this pathway and you go Separatists into Padme, Padme has already started you on the path. You've got fleet from Genosians. Padme will give you fleet for Galactic Republic down the long run. And then you can start going down the pathway for General Skywalker. All you'll have to do then is build out more Separatist droids and build out your clones, which you'll want for General Skywalker anyway. And then you've got three very powerful meta teams that, you're, that you are actively building at once, which also at the same time are feeding into higher arena ranks in both fleet and squad arena. Now, once you've hit that point, in my opinion, you should be only then should you start thinking about your first galactic legend. And this will apply to anybody, anybody, no matter what point of gaming you're at. If you do not have, if you have no galactic legend, the first one that you should invest in is the one that you are closest to unlocking. Now, by closest to unlocking, I mean if you only need a little bit more investment, okay? If none of your GLs are particularly close to, to being unlocked, the one you go for, and this is not up for debate, is Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. I'm sure you understand why, but I will we'll explain it anyway to really drive home the point. Supreme Leader Kylo Ren is the most valuable on an overall scale. He can beat any GL. He can solo a lot of teams in, in Grand Arena Territory War. He can solo the Heroic Sith Raid. He can 4 out of 4 in TB. He is the most value, valuable Galactic Legend investment. I'm not saying he's the best GL, but he probably is. Um, <laughs> but he also gives you far more value than any of the other characters do on a wider scale. Okay, so you will be st you'll, you'll be able to easily get into top 10 in, in the Sith Raid unless the entire guild is full of Supreme Leader Kylo Ren's, but you'll also be able to compete in every single game mode that he can participate in. He's the best first GL to invest in. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to wrap it up there. I think this video is getting a little bit too long. Um, please do let me know in the comments section down below if there are other areas that you would like me to focus on. I've got a few more videos coming out in this series, and I do hope that you will enjoy them, but I'm always open to comments and feedback. So in the description down below, you will find links to all my social media, my Twitter, my Discord, my Twitch channel. Please do join them. Come join me. Have a chat. Ask me questions. Tell me how great Smudge is because he's a good boy. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Just a quick shout out to my patrons. I appreciate each and every single one of you. Support, I wouldn't be doing this today. Thanks so much.